Hey, welcome back to InfoGamer. In this lesson, we're going to continue on with our PlayFab tutorial series. In the last lesson, we showed you how to request data for a leaderboard. In this lesson, we're going to show you how to create a visual leaderboard, and then we're going to populate that leaderboard with the data that we received. Now, if you haven't watched any of the previous videos in this series, then I would highly recommend that you start from the beginning. Now, before we get started, we'd like to invite you to join our new Discord server. On our Discord server, you can participate in live chats with us and other game developers. If you have a question regarding one of our videos, or if you'd like to receive help with the project that you are currently working on, you're welcome to send us a message over one of the Discord channels. On our Discord channel, you're also welcome to share any games or features you've been able to successfully create. To join our Discord, all you have to do is make sure that you have a Discord account, and then click our invitation link in the description below. So here we have our PlayFab project open inside of Unity, and the first thing I'm going to do is create our leaderboard panel. And so I'm going to right-click on our Canvas game object, I'm going to go down to UI and I'm going to select panel. Now this is going to be a very basic leaderboard. There's not going to be very much art involved. But if you want to, you can customize your leaderboard as much as you'd like and add all the art you need. I'm then going to rename this object to leaderboard panel. Now the next thing I'm going to do is right click on our leaderboard panel, go down to UI and select text. This is going to be the title of our leaderboard, and so I'm going to increase the size, change the text, and reposition it. Next, I'm going to right click on our leaderboard panel. I'm going to go down to UI and I'm going to select image. I'm then going to rename this image to something like scroll view. And I'm going to change the color of this image and I'm going to resize it. Then with our scroll view selected, I'm going to click on add component and I'm going to search for scroll rect. I'm also going to click on Add Component, and I'm going to search for Mask. Now I'm going to right-click on our scroll view, and I'm going to go to UI. I'm going to select Image, and then going to rename this image to something like Layout Group. I'm then going to resize our Layout Group, and then I'll make its color transparent. Then with our layout group object selected, I'm going to click on add component and I'm going to search for vertical layout group. I'm then going to change child alignment to upper center. I'm then going to uncheck width and height for child force expansion. We can then go back to our scroll view and we want to select our layout group and drag it into the content field. We then want to uncheck horizontal for its directions of movement. So now we've kind of created a container for our leaderboard. Now what we need to do is create the listings for each player in our leaderboard that we can use to populate this container. So I'm going to right click on our layout group and go down to UI and select image. We can then rename this object to something like leaderboard listing. We can then make it just smaller than our grid layout group. And I'm going to go to our layout group and I'm going to set the top padding to 10. And then I'm going to set the spacing to five. Now I'm going to right click on our leaderboard listing. I'm gonna go down to UI and select text. We can then reposition this text over to the left hand side of our leaderboard listing and make it a little bit bigger. I'm also going to rename this text object to something like player name. We can then create another text object, but we're going to move it over to the right hand side of our leaderboard listing.
Now what we need to do is create a new script to hold access to these two different text objects. So I'm going to go to our scripts folder, I'm going to right click, go to create, C sharp script, and we can call this leaderboard listing. I'm then going to open it up in Visual Studios. Inside Visual Studios, we can remove our start and update function. We're then going to add a namespace up the top, which is using Unity Engine.ui. Now all we have to do is create two public text variables. So I'm going to type public text. We can call this variable something like player name text. For the next variable, it's going to be a public text variable, and this can be our player score text. Now we can save this script and go back to Unity. I'm then going to select our leaderboard listing, and I'm going to then drag on our leaderboard listing script. We can then set these variables in the inspector by dragging our text objects into each of these fields. Now what we need to do is create a prefab out of our leaderboard listing, and to do this, I'm going to right click on our assets folder, go to create, and then select folder. I'm going to name this folder prefabs. We can then select our leaderboard listing game object and drag it into our prefabs folder. Now we can remove our leaderboard listing from our hierarchy. The last thing that we need to do for our leaderboard is create a button. So I'm going to right click on our leaderboard panel, go down to UI, and I'm going to select button. We're then going to make this button into a square, and this will be our close button. Now I'm going to change the text, and I'm going to just make it a capital X, and then going to size up the text, and then going to go back to our button. I'm going to change the color to a red, and I'm going to reposition it in the top right corner of our panel. So now that we've created our leaderboard, it's time to start scripting it. So let's go to our PlayFab controller script. I'm going to open that up. Now to display this leaderboard and to populate it with the different entries, we're going to be using the code that we created in the last video. And more specifically, we're going to be working in the onGetLeaderboard function. But before we do that, we need to create some new variables up at the top. And so outside our leaderboard region, we're going to create a public game object, and this will be for our leaderboard panel. We can then create a public game object, and this will be for our listings prefab. Now we need one more variable, and this will be for the transform of our container. And so this is going to be public transform, and we'll call this variable listing container. Now that we have these variables, let's scroll down to our onGetLeaderboard function. Inside this function, we have this for each loop that loops through each player in our leaderboard, and it logs their name and their stat value to the console. Now before this for each loop, we need to enable our leaderboard panel. And so I'm going to type leaderboard panel dot set active, and I'm going to set it to true. Now that we have our leaderboard enabled, we need to start populating it with entries from our leaderboard, and we'll do this within our for each loop. So the first thing that we need to do is instantiate a new listings prefab, and we're going to save this into a local game object variable. So I'm going to type game object, and I'll call this temp listing. We'll set it equal to instantiate, and we'll pass in our listing prefab. For the transform parent, we're going to set it equal to our container. And so this is listing container. Now that we've created a new listing and we've added it to our layout group, we need to get the leaderboard listing script from this game object. And so I'm going to type leaderboard listing. We can give it a name like LL, doesn't really matter. We're going to set it equal to temp listing dot get component. We're going to pass in leaderboard listing and parentheses semicolon. Now that we have this script, we can populate the text objects 
with the display name and the stat value. So I'm going to type ll dot player name text dot text and I'm going to set it equal to player dot display name. On the next line we're going to get ll and then dot player score text dot text we're going to set it equal to player dot stat value and we need to make this into a string so dot to string so this should be everything that we need to create a new leaderboard panel with all of the listings that we've received from our request now all we have to do is create a function that we can pair to our close button that will hide our leaderboard panel and destroy all of these listings. So I'm going to create a new public void function and we can call this close leaderboard panel. The first thing that we're going to do inside this function is hide our leaderboard panel. And so I'm going to type leaderboard panel dot set active and we're going to pass in false. Then what we can do is we can for loop through all of the children of our listings container and destroy each child object. And just to be safe, we're going to start at the last child and for loop backwards to the first child. And so I'm going to type for int i equals listing container dot child count minus one i is greater than or equal to zero and then i minus minus. Inside this for loop, we can type destroy, and then we can pass in listing container dot get child, and we're going to pass in i for the index. We then want to get the game object. So now let's save this script, and we'll go back to Unity. Inside Unity, we're first going to set our close button function. So I'm going to select our close button. I'm going to scroll down to the onclick event. I'm going to click the plus sign. I'm then going to find our play fab controller and drag it into here. I'm then going to use the drop down menu, go to play fab controller, and then find our close leaderboard panel. Now we need to set some variables for our play fab controller. The first one is our leaderboard panel. And so I'm going to select that and drag it into here. The next one is our listing prefab. So I'm going to go to our prefabs folder and I'm going to select our leaderboard listing and drag it in here. And the last one is our listing container, which is our layout group. Now what we can do is we can select our leaderboard panel and hide it by disabling it. Now let's go ahead and test our game. So here you can see that it's logged me into my playfab account. And now all I have to do is click our leaderboard button. And there you can see it's enabled our leaderboard panel and it's populated two different entries or listings with one our InfoGamer account and the score is 5000 and then our tester account and the score is 1000. And if you remember from the last video these are the only two accounts that we currently have for this leaderboard. Now if we had more accounts with the high score player statistics set then those accounts would also show up in this leaderboard and there would be up to 20 listings for this leaderboard because that's the value that we set in the last video. Now another cool feature about this leaderboard is the mask and the scroll rect. So if I left click and I drag up, you'll notice that this window is scrollable. And if we had enough listings that they ran off the bottom of our window, you would then be able to scroll through them and see all of the listings. Now the next thing that we need to test is closing our leaderboard panel. And for this, I want you to pay attention to our leaderboard listing game objects in the hierarchy. This first one is for our InfoGamer entry, and the second one is for our Tester entry. So when I click this X button, you'll notice that they disappear from our layout group. And if I click the leaderboard button again, they reappear. Now what I'd like to do is update our Tester score so that it's higher than our InfoGamer score. We'll then close our score panel and see if the order of these listings have changed. So for this, we're going to go back to our PlayFabs dashboard. I'm then going to select our Player tab. I then need to select our Tester account. 
I'm then going to go to statistics and then I'm going to change our player high score statistic so that it's greater than 5,000. We'll say 10,000. Now I'll click save player statistic and then we'll go back to Unity. Once back in Unity, I'm going to close our scoreboard panel and then I'm going to click leaderboard panel one more time. And there you can see that our tester account is now placed above our InfoGamer account and the score is now 10,000. So that's everything that we're going to cover in this lesson. This is a very basic way to do leaderboards and I would expect you to expound on this lesson, maybe add in some additional features and also make your leaderboard look a lot cooler than mine. If you like this lesson, make sure that you give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and also subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date on all our latest videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.